So I have a question that I want to pose to you guys, because I'm thinking about growing up as a comic book reader and how much fun that was. And I'm thinking about the magic that I used to feel. And I have a specific series when I say magic, and I hope you guys do too. When I say that word, when I talk about the magic of comics, I'm specifically thinking about two books. I'm thinking about Grant Morrison's uh, Batman, and I'm thinking about Civil War. Specifically, when I would get that new issue of Civil War, and I'd open up the Midtown Comics bag, and seeing that cover and diving into it, that was magic for me at 16. I want to know if all these years later, we and you still feel that magic feeling about comics that you did when you first started reading or at the height of your fandom. It's like a married couple wondering if the spark is still there. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. Um, in that in that analogy, for me, it's a bit like uh, maybe we should, you know, uh, bring someone else in, you know, uh, uh, open this relationship yeah, up. do a little screenwriting, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, for, when I say that, what do you think of first of all? For me, it, it's similar to you, Sean, but but it's a little bit further. It's it's Secret Invasion where all those tie-ins were there, and I I was enjoying the tie-ins. It was like all right. Uh, Mighty Avengers is out. New Avengers is out. Avengers the Initiative is out. Oh, wait. Cable and Deadpool has a crossover here, you know? Um, yeah, I loved all that stuff. Uh, it was definitely Marvel, peak Marvel event time, you know, when they had the the eras of Dark Reign, Secret Invasion, Civil War. Um, that's where it was, like, magical to me. I, it, it just the idea of all these different things connecting storyline-wise and something that happened here mattered in another book. Um which, which honestly is something I would complain about now, um, but uh, back then it, it was magical for me because I, I didn't know that was a thing comic books did at the time. Yeah, I know you've got a magical era. Yeah, but I feel very removed from it, mm. um, especially at this point. But uh, let's see. So what would it be? So it would it probably I think mine would actually be before yours and sort of extends into yours. Um for me it's uh Green Lantern Rebirth, Identity Crisis, and sort of that Infinite Crisis era DC. I figured that. Yeah. Marco it would be that image boom, that's where I started to come in on weekly comics, and that was magic. It 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 first started as like playing catch up. You know, I need to hit the, all the big books, all the things that people know about, so I can enter the conversation. But image was that first place where I was like, oh no, this is this is the path that I'm taking. Um, so that in particular. Uh, sparks a lot of enjoyment and I haven't deviated much um, because there are definitely books now and the gauge for I think magic is whether or not a book can get me to stop on a page and like take it Mm. in and absorb Mm. it because I think that's where I feel like the the writer the artist they've they've had that perfect team and it's whatever they've tried to communicate has landed. Yeah. And I want to say, I think this is an extremely personal conversation because what constitutes magic is going to be different, I guess, for every individual person. And, you know, there are going to be people who say uh, that's dead. You know, that I don't, I don't feel that anymore. I'm very far removed from feeling that and comics can't make me feel like that anymore. Um, comics can't make anyone feel like that anymore. There are definitely people who will have that opinion. I think when it comes to magic, which for me is, wow, comics can really do anything. You know, when you see something that's just like, wow, that's really amazing, you know, and it, it brings out that, I guess for me now, what it has to do is it has to bring me back. It has to make me feel how I felt yeah, you know, back then and get that giddiness out of me and that, yeah. you know, that um, visceral excitement. And you know what? 
I'm happy to say that that still does happen for me. Heroes in Crisis. Oh. <laughs> that was when the magic ended. Yeah. Event Leviathan. <laughs> that just started off good. Heroes in Crisis right. is what, what required <laughs> no, uh, couples therapy for this magical uh, relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, like the magic comes from stuff I've never seen before. Um, so I, you know, while I think I am far removed from the era that I sort of grew up, you know, grew, grew into fandom, um, I find it in stuff that really just blows me away in, you know, to use sort of Marco's example, Chainsaw Man, man, I read that first one and got through, you know, the first like arc or whatever. And then I could not stop. And I like I don't binge read, but I physically could not stop myself from reading the rest of Chainsaw Man. Um, and I like I was blown away. It's weird because Sean, you mentioned like you need something that kind of tickles that same feeling you had way back when. Um, for me, it's it's different. Um, I don't. Like, like, sure, I'll, I'll read stuff that feels like Secret Invasion to me, and it feels like a cool event. But that's not the stuff that kind of wows me anymore. Is it cool? Yeah, that's fine. But the stuff that wows me now is like, like Zoe Thurgood's "It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth." Yeah, um, it's it's you know beneath the trees where nobody sees what we just read, and something like that. It's uh, even I mean, it's still it's still a superhero book, but Human Target is different. It's it feels like sure it's playing in that world, but it it's something uh, that is a real collaboration with writer artist mm. that feels special. There's like when the, you you can tell there's special sauce with something, you know. Um, These Savage Shores, uh, Rambi, like that one blew me away when I read that. Um, so it's it's stuff where I feel like the creative process is either. Such a soul process with like Zoe Thurgood's, um, you know, autobiography essentially is what that is, mm-hmm. um, where it's just her pouring herself onto the page, or when two, two or multiple people just really click with a with a run or a story, um, and then that, that's where it's like, all right, yeah, this is why comics still exist as a medium. I think to that second part, you know, finding that team and that, those set of creators, you know, there's something like. Uh, Brubaker and Phillips, I feel like that's always going to be, um, if not good, great. And uh, Daniel Warren Johnson, most recently, who with you know the with Spicer, that's a team to be had. Yeah, it, it's I think similarly those when you have that collaboration, um, and uh, for me, it's also when I see something that is maybe a little uh, experimental, something that might be arbitrary um, because it's thinking about the medium in a different way. And maybe in the use, it wasn't perfect. It was still that experiment. Uh, But that means that there's, if this person has thought of that, it's likely that somebody else in the world who's also making comics has thought of that and is potentially implementing it in a way that maybe might make more sense and, and can can grow. You know, like, there was a point where somebody invented the first splash page or the first two splash pages, right? So like from there, it's only grown. What else can you do with the medium? That part's very interesting to me and definitely sparks that that magic. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of like Mr. Boop. Like, yeah. like that <laughs> was like, oh yeah, I forgot comics can be like this. You know, it's, it's four panels uh, and it, a, a story really. Um, but, and, and it's not, it's not the most, uh, uh, highbrow. Guess, yeah. Highbrow at all. Uh, there's a po- there's multiple post coital scenes with Sonic the Hedgehog. So, um, but the, what it, what it tries to do and play with in terms of copyright and all that stuff is, is interesting. Sean, I'm, I'm curious, how do you balance something like, uh, 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 Tilly's book spinning like how, how do you how do you look at that as that newer end compared to things that 
because you said you, you want the book to bring something back for you or to reflect back on something you've liked previously. D does that differ for something like spinning? Yeah, so that's actually not what I was, I guess, it's a, at the very least, not what I was trying to say, that it has to be what I read. It just has to make me feel excited like I felt. Mm. You know, it has to be special and interesting. And I mean, it's hard to it's hard to find things that recapture excitement and joy in ways that you felt as a kid, you know, and so I'm almost 20 years deep into this odyssey of fandom and things like spinning are things that I read and knock me on my ass and go, wow, yeah, like this is. This is why I'm a fan the same way that Civil War did that for me, you know, almost 20 years behind. But even a book like, um, like, for example, you want to talk about magic. I feel that when I read, when I read and when I read House and Powers by Hickman and LaRoz and Gracia and, and Silva, I, I read that and I'm like, wow, this is a magician at work. This is people at the top of their craft who know how to do this who are telling a story that for me is spellbinding. Um, and that's the kind of thing that I'm seeking. You know, superhero stories, and quite frankly, even um, non-Big Two stories, they kind of get repetitive. We all know that. And yeah, maybe there's a big new high concept, but underneath the hood, we've all seen this a million times. So it's like, how are you going to do something that's meaningfully different that makes me think differently or makes me look at comics differently in the same way that those books did 20 years ago. That's what I'm chasing. Hmm. I, I think, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think for me, I feel like a lot of magic has sort of been lost because of the under, under the hood aspect. You know, I've spent so long really dedicating myself to, um writing and looking at comic books you know in a, a close reading way and trying to figure out how they work and why they work or don't and you know so much of it like you say is is repetitive um and i think that's why i'm especially lately i've been looking outside of the big two for more stuff and and manga is hitting that itch for me i have a um a, a picture uh, saved in my phone, a panel from uh, One Piece of Rora, uh, Marco, help me, Rora, Rora, Rora Noah, Noah Zoro. Zoro, yeah, Rora Noah Zoro. The sword guy. Yep. Um. He Right, so this character has three swords. He fights with two swords in his hands, but also one in his teeth. Oh. That's insane. Duh, I'm not finished. <laughs> He is fighting a man made of swords. Oh, what? So a guy, so a guy, I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. okay. It's been a while since I've read it, but yeah. the guy, his, his limbs are swords. Like he's got an arm, but the back half of his limbs are blades. So the guy's leg is straight up in the air coming down on Zoro's three swords. And I, I had to stop and take the screenshot, and I went, "This is fucking comics," because it was just like, "How do was you that, think of something like was that?" Was that the the sword that ate a double fruit or something like that? No, no I don't no. know. No, okay, it, it, right, it's right. just a guy that he his thing is like he gets medley or whatever, but he makes swords out of himself. I love the fact, though, Kale, that that what you just said. If I read that, I'd probably go like, okay, fine. But for you, that was magic. Mm. And that that's what I meant before by how individual it can be. Like, hey, yeah. I get on this podcast and I talk about Amazing Spider-Man and I, I, you guys know I love it to death. Mm -hmm. But most people seem to hate it. Mm. But I'm still getting that magic out of it. You yeah. know? When, when earlier you said, Marco, like, oh, books that make you feel how you did. And Amazing Spider-Man literally makes me feel how I did. Yeah. Because I've read it before. But it's but but right now for me it feels really special. Um and it feels like it's it's hitting beats that I do want hit again in a slightly different way. 
So it, it is, it's unique. It's a unique thing for everyone mm. who I feel sad for. And this is something that non judgmentally, I would say, looking, looking inward and going, you know, the people that don't feel that magic for comics anymore on any level. I, I wonder a lot about that. I wonder a lot about, are you picking the right books for yourself? Are you allowing yourself to expand? There are a lot of people who have been reading Marvel and DC for 20 plus years that don't necessarily look past that. Yeah. And I say to you, hey, man, it might be time. And even in the Marvel and DC sandbox, there are books that people will skip past, like Birds of Prey, you know, um, that are special, that feel uh, meaningfully different. I'd, I'd also argue, like, if it's not magical for you, maybe stop, you know? <laughs> like, that's not the worst thing ever, too. And sometimes you have to get away from something and then come back to it again to recapture the magic. You know, you don't remember how much you like something until you don't have it anymore. Mm. Um, and, and I think some of those people are a little vocal, too, who don't have magic anymore. Or, like, it, and then that breeds negativity, and then it's just, it's not a good soup of emotion, I agree with you wholeheartedly, and I think the people who have lost that spark for comics, you can tell, I think. Mm. That was, there was a comic shop near me, where like the guy who owned it, you can tell that was gone, you know? Which, to mm. be fair, he owned a comic book shop, so there's a lot more <laughs> involved and invested, you know, monetarily, personally, um, and I can see that causing an issue. Um, but yeah, it's it's okay, <laughs> Yeah, I, that's something I fight with a lot um, on the show, especially Pals Pulls, because we're reading, um, you know, superhero books every week. And I feel like for the most part, I come down really negative on a lot of things. But what I've learned, especially, especially doing Pals Pulls, is that, you know, coming at it with criticism and and like looking at it as uh, you know from the angle of what this book's potential is and like what it's trying to do like you know and and trying to give it the benefit of the doubt you know nobody's making comics because they don't like comics you know, I'm I I I don't want to come on the show and just spout negativity. You know, and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But sometimes these companies get in their own way. And for me, I think often I try to criticize the companies, not the creators. Yeah, if somebody's making comics, they're making because they love comics. Somebody does it for money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I. that's definitely something that I think about and struggle with as well, Kale. And, um There's another episode of this in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that's a, I think that's a good note to close out on is, you know, evaluate your, your fandom. And it doesn't, mm. it's not limited to comics, but, you know, we're, that's what we're talking about. Evaluate your fandom. Like, are you still passionate about it this many years down the road? Like, is it still meaningful to you? And if not, Tyler says, hey, it's cool to close the door. I agree with that. Divorce is before, fine. <laughs> before you take that step, look outside the box. It's harder to do that if you're just a Rick and Morty fan, for example. But in comics, the world is your oyster. And the biggest thing that I have learned over the last decade is how much more there is to mm. comics than just the stuff that gets pushed out to us, like the the, the, the stuff that's in our faces. Um, and a lot of the stuff that's behind that is pretty good. So thank you guys for watching. If you've got topics that you want us to, to talk about, send them in. Send them our way, and uh, there's a pretty good chance we'll do a video about it. So uh, let us know that. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.